It'll be one to go this time by. Coming to the green, buddy. Coming to the green. Let's go get him. Go, go, go. Dig, dig, dig. Go, 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 go. Get your motor running. Mike, Mike Mulhern, Winston Salem Journal. The blunt fact is that unless, if Carl Edwards, Carl Bush, and Carl Edwards, one of those He's guys doesn't win the championship, I want to see Kyle do a backflip. That'd be good. It's going to be a fluke. Jimmy Johnson might be able to pull off like uh, like Clint did last year, but the other nine guys, unless something really drastically happens with the car tomorrow, I don't see any of those nine guys really making a leap ahead. Well, this is the same thing that people said about the the uh, New England Patriots last year. You know, the New England Patriots were undefeated. Nobody could beat them, and, you know, the Giants couldn't play, and Eli Manning sucked, and, and you know, we, the coach was terrible. And, I mean, you know, let's face it, that's what they said, right? I mean, the coach needs to go. The quarterback's no good. They kicked, you know, they kicked their ass when it counted. So, you know, the way I look at it, ten races is an eternity. I mean, ten races, I mean, you guys do it every week. You guys know what what happens in 10 races. I mean, go back and think about any 10-race schedule, any 10-race stretch that we had this year. You know, Kyle Busch and those guys, they've stood above the crowd. There's no question. But one race where they don't do that, one race in any of the 10, well, it's on. So, you know, I don't believe that the teams, you, you look at the 29 car. I mean, look at what the 29 car has been able to do the last four weeks, five weeks. I mean, you know, they they've knocked down top five, top. I mean, they've run really, really well. It's all about being hot now. It's all about getting it done now. And and you know, there's the reason that they don't write the check before it's over is because it ain't over till it's over. And and um, those people are not invincible. You know, Kyle Busch is not prone. You know, he he you know he isn't never going to make a mistake. Carl Edwards is never going to make a mistake. His teams are not ever going to not make a mistake. So. You know, you have to execute on those mistakes. But the first thing you have to do is just put pressure on them. You got to show them that you can beat them. And once, once you know, once you show, once you show the, whoever it is the hot dog is at that moment, once you show them that that you can deal with them, then that changes their mindset. And now it's game on. So I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't consider it a fluke if someone else won. Question in the back. We've got a couple more, then we probably need to roll out. Go ahead. Jeff. Brian Nelson with MRN Radio with Tony getting ready to make an announcement about his crew chief. Curious from your experience, what are the ingredients of a good driver crew chief relationship? Well, that's that's a um, that's a difficult answer because I think it's di different for everybody. You know, the the crew chief that uh, is good for Tony Stewart may not be a crew chief that's good for Jeff Gordon. Um, the you know, some drivers want the crew chief to give them information that that's that they believe is useful, other drivers don't. It's really a match. It's it's the two of them finding a way to lean on each other, uh, to, to depend on each other, to support each other. But that the definition of all that's different for everybody. I mean, it's it's just completely different. I mean, we have, you know, we I see it every day the way that the three crew chiefs at our company work with the three drivers. It's different in every case. So there is no stereotypical, you know, this is how you need to do it. It just depends on the driver and the, and the crew chief. You know, personalities are, are a lot different between person to person, you know, as we all know, especially in this room. And uh, there's there's a lot of, uh, that was a little small dick. That was a, uh, you know, that's the whole deal is getting the right, the, the two people together that know how to help each other. But, you know, if, if Tony may not work with this new crew chief the same way he's worked with, uh, was Zipadilly. I mean, you know, that it may be completely different because this other, this new crew chief, his personality may be completely different. So there's no stereotypical way. It's just making it work for those two guys. Probably got time for maybe two, then we've got to 10 o'clock. Go ahead. If we can get Lee and then Ed, and we'll finish it up. He didn't ask me to be his crew chief. I don't know. I think I've been good at it. Lee Spencer, Fox Sports. You said 10 races is an eternity. What's it like? If you're not in the chase, what is your role then? What are your feelings? And I know you got to go back to I think 2005, but w explain what that's like. Uh, you feel left out. I mean, you don't feel like you're part of the group. You, uh, you know, you you um, you feel like something's going on and you're not included in it. It's the best way I know how to describe it. Um, and it's it's impossible for you not to feel like that. It's uh, you know all the attention and rightfully so goes to the to the chase. Um, you know, I, I remember um, 
would have been 2006, I think, this race, I qualified like, I don't know, maybe I was on the pole at the time. It was second or something, and I pulled in, you know, and there wasn't one member of the media that was standing there, you know. <laughs> and at the time, it was like, you know, we didn't sit on the pole, but at the time, I think we were on the pole, and it was pretty late in qualifying, and there wasn't one person standing there. And, uh, you know, that, that explains it in a nutshell. I mean, if you're, not, if you're not part of the playoffs, if you're not part of the championship hunt, you're just, you, you feel like you're left out. You, your mindset is, okay, we're building to next year. Now we can go and do things for next year. And, uh, but it, but it's, it's, hard to take, it's hard to take it and put a positive spin on it. Final question. Ed Hinton, ESPN.com. Do you think about that this whole Kyle Carl thing, whether it's big or not, that you may very well be the cause of it? In that uh, it was it was perfectly okay to move. All right, let me just lean back and listen to this one. Right. Precedent had been building that it was perfectly okay to move somebody at Bristol to win a race, and Jeff Gordon was doing it. Rusty was everybody it was it was tradition. And all of a sudden, gentleman Jeff comes along, refuses to move Kyle at Bristol in the first, I believe the first COT race, and all of a sudden it becomes not okay. Do you think you broke the precedent and, and, and actually put some manners back in and therefore <laughs> created this feud? My mother would be so proud. <clears throat> um, listen, the, the rules I live by is that, you know, we I give the other driver the, you know, he makes the rules. And if you listen to Carl's explanation of what happened at Bristol, is that Kyle had made the rules. And that um, Carl was doing, under that situation, if, if, you know, if I was in Carl's situation and Kyle had made the rules in a previous race, then, you know, I'd have done the same thing Carl did. But in my situation at Bristol, Kyle had never done that. Kyle had always raced me, and, and to this point, even at Watkins Glen. I mean, at Watkins Glen, you know, we had a disagreement on the racetrack in the, in the nationwide race, and, you know, but I went back and made it even, and it's over. And Kyle and I sat down and talked about it, and now the slate's clean. So, you know, my view of Bristol was that, you know, if, you know, Kyle, Carl believes Kyle made the rule. And Carl says, hey, Kyle knocked me out of the way somewhere, so that's what I was doing to him. I don't know if that happened or not. That's what Carl said. Kyle doesn't remember it. So, you know, Kyle, uh, so now Kyle's made, Carl's made the rule for Kyle. And it just, the snowball gets bigger. Jeff, thanks a lot. Good luck this weekend.